guys. I am back from my travels. I have been at Greenwood Lake in New York for over a week. How long have I, how long was I there? I want to say like nine, 10 days I was there. Anyway, it was so wonderful. I think I told you guys, uh, before I left, um, that I was leaving, <laughs> that I was going. And it was just so relaxing. And I hemmed and hawed about whether or not I wanted to vlog while I was there. And I just decided not to. I was like, you know, my goal is to like do nothing. And if I tell myself I'm gonna vlog, I'm gonna like make stuff up to do and make sure I have vlogging content. And I, I just, I didn't wanna put that pressure on myself. And I also didn't wanna make a really boring vlog for you guys, but I had a really great time. It was a wonderful mix of like socializing and relaxing. I read about six books while I was there. I finished like an entire TV show. I caught up with, some of my like NYU friends, I caught up with some of my other girlfriends, I caught up with another group of friends. Um, and then of course I had the group of friends um, that I see and hang out with while I'm there at the lake. So it was just really lovely. You know, whenever people ask me how I like Vegas in comparison to New York, I always, I mean, it's almost no comparison because it's like apples and oranges, but I just miss, I just miss my people in New York. I miss, um, you know, all of my friends and stuff. Not that I don't have great friends here in Vegas, but you know, my friends in New York, I've known forever. They know me better than I know myself. They're like family. So it's always just, it's so great to like be back in touch with them. But anyway, I am back. I just got back yesterday and my flight was delayed, of course. Um, I still got back in time for like dinner and everything. So it was, it was fine. It ended up being fine. And I think we made up most of our delayed time in the air because I didn't land actually that much later than was planned. So it ended up being fine. And today I just, it's re-entry is so hard, isn't it? <laughs> so, so hard. So I woke up, I had Pilates. I just wanted to get right back into it. In the past, I usually like give myself a couple of days, but it almost makes it harder. This way it's like I just shock myself back into it. And I had Pilates, I had to go to the supermarket, I had to go to Costco, um, I had to take care of butters, you know, feed and walk her, or whatever. So it was kind of a hectic morning. And um, oh, just to give you a little update on, you know, the eating and the training and stuff. So while I was away, I did work out twice. Um, probably could have worked out a little bit more, but the gym that I went to, that I, you know, bought guest passes for or whatever, they didn't allow guest passes like for whatever. Anyway, no excuses. I could have figured it out, but I only worked out twice, which, you know, I was on vacation, so not bad. And because I was staying with my friend, I went grocery shopping. And while, when we ate at the house, I just cooked one of my regular kind of like trainer approved meals. So that actually worked out. Um, I probably had a few more, you know, cheat, cheat treats <laughs> than I planned. Um, but you know, when you go out and you're at someone's house, I didn't, I didn't want to be, I just didn't want to be that person that like brought their food. I did it once and it felt a little strange. Um, and then the other, you know, a few times I just went with the flow. I just didn't eat as much. I you know, skipped dessert, things like that. So I was pretty well behaved. I felt in control. I didn't feel deprived. Um, but I did have to like focus on that and think about it because I had not been in any social situations like that since I started working out with my trainer um, or, or on this uh, sort of nutrition plan. And, you know, at the part there was chips and dip or whatever, and I would just instinctively go and, and grab it and, you know, want some. And I was like, oh, wait, wait, no, let's think about this. If you have one, will you only be able to have one? I was like, no, they're absolutely not. <laughs> so I'm like, let's not start. Let's not start. Let's see how the day goes. And yeah, I was, I was pretty well behaved. You know, I had a few, one night I had a slice of pizza, not great, but that was the only option <laughs> where we were. And one night I had some ice cream again, not great, but I didn't have a ton you know, I kind of gave myself a small little portion. So yeah, I think, um, I think I did pretty well, you know, considering I am not trying to just like drop weight or, 
you know, anything like that. I'm really just trying to make some permanent changes. And of course, we, we all, we say the same things to ourselves. I'm just hoping this time it sticks. So anyway, I'm back. I am back. How are you guys? It feels like fall is here. Um, not temperature wise, but it's always the mood. And I have to say, you know, something that I still am not used to here in Vegas is like Labor Day is kind of not that big of a deal. It's a long weekend. Yahoo. Uh, but kids here start school like they started school like a month ago. And, you know, on the East Coast, it is such a big deal because it's the end of summer. It is quite literally the end of summer. It's like after Labor Day weekend, you put your grill away, you cover up the outdoor furniture, you know, stuff like that. You start to like um, winterize the pool and, and all the things. And then kids go back to school like a couple days after Labor Day. And it's just this ritual, and it's just not the same here in Vegas. Not only does, I don't want to say summer doesn't end, but you know, the season is much longer here. So it's still very warm here. And like I said, it's, kids have been in school now already a month. So it, it's not like a, there's no demarcation of Labor Day here. There's no, it doesn't signify anything like it does on the East Coast. So anyway, to me, once Labor Day hits, I'm like, oh, it's like, it's fall. Fall is here. I want to wear all the sweaters. I want to wear all the sweatshirts. I want to wear all the boots, you know, all the things, but I have to wait. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking out the window here. It's like so sunny and it's so warm. I just cranked up the AC, but it's still really warm. Anyway, I'm sitting here because I want to put on some new makeup. So I hauled this new makeup before I left. So you actually probably just saw that vlog because um, I kind of spaced up my um, uploading. So I have some of those clay de po um, eyeshadow quads. I have a Suku foundation. I have a Suku face palette. I have those Violette um, blush sticks. And I have some new U Beauty, the plasma lip compound. I have some new shades. They came out with some deeper tints of that. Um, brighter reds and stuff. So I wanted to try that. Is that it? I thought I, well, you know what? So Prada Beauty, I did that shorts where I talked about this one quad, the one with the yellow in there. Love it. I love the quality of it. Um, I also um, played around with the lipstick. This li lipstick is fine. I just don't think there's anything terribly special about it. It's fine. It's a soft matte, whatever. Anyway, I made a shorts of that. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But I did also get another um, Prada quad, which I can't find right now, but I've been waiting to use that for when I get the Prada foundation. Now I can order the foundation, um, I think from like Harrods and it's definitely popping up in some places, but no like US retailers. I'd really prefer to get it from like Nordstrom or Prada itself or someplace or get shade match because I don't want to get a shade that I can't return and I cannot return open used makeup to like European retailers. Um, so anyway, that is one new item that I have not tried out for you guys. And I also have a ton of PR that came in, of course, while I was away. So after we put on this makeup, <laughs> we'll go ahead and open up some more packages. Uh, of some new stuff. And then tonight, I'm actually going to the Lueve Boutique at the Wynn. They invited me for like a little cocktail party or whatever. Um, and I think they are featuring some new fall handbags. And there's this big kind of slouchy hobo that looks really, really cool. So I'm tempted by that. We'll see. Oh, and I also have to show you what I got while I was in New York. So I did end up going to Woodbury Commons, which is this uh, huge like outlet shopping mall. And they have a lot of designer stores there. So I got a bunch of things at Prada. I got uh, something at Loewe, something at Celine, and something at Bottega, Bottega Veneta. So a lot of fun stuff. So I'll do a haul for you guys. Maybe tomorrow I'll do that. Um, but let's start with the Suku foundation. So this is the foundation and they sent over shade 110 and they also sent over shade 115, but in this little kind of sample cup, I guess they did not have um, a full size or they maybe can send me a full size of it, which is totally fine. I do think 110 is probably the right shade for me. Yeah, I think this is actually gonna be fine. 
I, despite being at the lake, I was really, really good about applying SPF and reapplying SPF with my Shiseido clear sunscreen stick. I was religious about it, and I don't think I got any color <laughs> while I was there, which is amazing because I spent a lot of time outside. Okay, let me just grab some off of this uh, plastic top. Butters, did you guys hear that? I'll have to play this back and see if you guys could hear it. She just farted. Butters. And no, it's not me farting and blaming it on my dog. She <laughs> farted. Okay, let me use this Sonia G Classic base brush and blend this in. Hopefully it's the right shade. I think if anything, it may be a little light. I think it depends on the coverage too. Ooh, that's nice. Look at that kind of silky radiance. Oh, I love that. And I didn't put much on. I would say the coverage is like a light medium. This is gorgeous though, look at this. You have this like glow as opposed to just a shine. Like here, I'm just kind of shiny. But look at this like soft glow. Wow, that's beautiful. And I think 110 is my shade. So if you use me as a shade reference, I would go with 110. Let's pick up just a little bit more here. Why can I throw this out? I hate these, <laughs> I hate these lids. I think they're supposed to prevent messiness, but I feel like they cause a lot of messiness too. Yeah, like I have it all over my fingers now. And I think, I'm actually not sure, but I know I've tried a Suku foundation in a jar. I think it's called the foundation. Actually, hold on. I think I may still have it. I was just thinking that I um, decluttered it, but I think I may still have it. Hang on. Oh no, I have the cream foundation. And yeah, this shade is 220. And I remember thinking the shade was not right for me. Yeah, it's too deep. It's too deep for me. Anyway, I really liked this foundation, but it was a lot glowier than this one. Like this, I would recommend probably for any skin type. I have a very dry skin type. This, I didn't feel comfortable recommending to someone that had like normal combo, especially oily skin. But this is definitely, I think, the radiance is like a lot softer. This was like really glowy. Okay, so that was the cream foundation and then this is just the foundation. This is really stunning. I really, really like the finish of it. It's gorgeous. So that is the foundation I wanted to try. And then I don't have any new concealer. I think I can probably use some, <laughs> especially considering I just got in yesterday. And I think I'm pretty used to the flight between here and New York. It's, you know, kind of long. It's like between, I want to say four and five hours, but it is, nonetheless long. It's, it's a longish flight. So anyway, I do feel like I look a little haggard, a little haggard. Yeah, just brighten it up a little. That was my Surat Dewdrop Concealer, by the way, in shade three. I'll have everything linked down below. All right, next, let's try these Violette blush sticks. I do, oh, wait a second, wait a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. Suku also sent this Anniversary Face Compact, which is basically like a pressed powder. Let's take a look at this. And by the way, they're celebrating their 20th anniversary, if you couldn't tell, which is so amazing. Here is the compact. And look at this. Powder. I'm pretty sure that's an overspray, but we'll see. I'm just gonna use this refer number five brush. This is like a blush brush, but I'm just gonna dip in here and see. Oh, there is quite a bit of golden sheen just from this like thin kind of design. It's, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the powder is like a, a translucent powder. And then this is a gold, and I feel like I'm seeing quite a bit of a gold sheen. I wonder if this is meant to be more of like a highlight because they just call this a face compact, face powder. Let's see, and 
definitely picking up product, and this doesn't seem to be going away. So maybe this is not just overspray. Hmm. I think because of this golden sheen, this may be better as a finishing powder versus a setting powder, which is what I'm using it as right now. <laughs> but I'm trying to like, you know, blur out any texture around here, and I think the gold sheen is not, is not actually helping. It's okay. I don't think it's like emphasizing it, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's kind of like a highlighter, so I don't think it's doing much for texture. I have the Violette um, FR, Violette French, Violette France. I don't know what the full name of this, Violette FR. I'm just gonna say Violette. Um, I have these blush sticks, and then I do have the Suku Eye and Blush Compact. Let me see what's in here. Very pretty. I think I'm gonna have to save this for another time because I have the Clay de Peau eyeshadows to play with, and then I do wanna try the Violette blush sticks. So let's see. When I haul these for you, I swatch them. So I'm not gonna swatch them all again. I'm just gonna pull out the one that I would like to use. So Louise is, I believe, the most neutral. And they're all marbled like that, isn't that cool? And then they do have uh, like this death, dense brush on the other side, which I'm probably not gonna use. So this is described as a matte cream blush. I am going to pick some up on my finger. There's the shade, by the way. And then just dab it on. Really pretty, blended out very, very nicely and doesn't feel like sticky or anything. Nice texture. There's a slight fragrance, like a slight kind of light fruity fragrance. Look at that, that's beautiful. All right, so that is the Violette Bisou Blush. Did I show you the packaging? Here's the packaging, it's so pretty with this gold cap. Okay, so I don't have any bronzer or highlighter on. I think that's fine. We don't have to go like full, <laughs> full glam today. And I am gonna do my brows. I've got the Persona Swipe Up Brow Gel. I forgot to bring my tweezers to New York. And when I came home, I looked like a werewolf. I had so much brow hair, like all the way down to here. I had to clean them up. I really, derive a lot of pleasure from plucking my eyebrows. So I just was having like the time of my life this morning just cleaning up my brows. <laughs> All right, Clay de Peau, let's try these out. So I think the first one that I pulled out, which was number three, is the one that I wanted to try. It's called Sun-Dried Driftwood. This is, that looks like, and then there's also Number four, ooh, and I believe this is the one that Benjamin Pucky used on me when I spoke at that Clay de Peau internal meeting. Yeah, this is called Ocean Sunrise. I don't quite get that name in relation to this <laughs> quad, but this is Ocean Sunrise. Yeah, maybe I'll use this one nice and, nice and neutral. This one is a bit, Cooler. Ooh, maybe I'll use this one. This one's number seven. And it's called number seven, Starlight Splendor. Yeah, maybe I'll use this one. Let me swatch all four of these shades here. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'll use this one. So, so this one again is number seven, Starlight Splendor. And I'm gonna have to figure out how to do, maybe I'll do a shorts, just kind of swatching all of these. Um, but when I spoke to Benjamin Pucky about these, and he's the color director at Clay de Peau, he's a fantastic makeup artist, one of my favorites. And he was talking about how he, of course, was able to see how these shadows are made. And he said that they're made almost like a dough. So each color, they like mix up, like like an industrial like mixer, like a food mixer, into this dough, and then they're pressed into these pans and then baked. Isn't that cool? I just thought that was so neat because I just always think that it's just a bunch of powder that's like pressed in. But no, this has a really uh, kind of creamy texture to it, but not overly um, oily feeling in any way. They just have a really nice kind of like glide to them. So anyway, let me 
hush up and apply these. So I'm gonna use my Esam S33 brush, and this is part of my Esam brush collection, if you are interested in picking that up. I am going to pick up this mid-tone brown color. This is such a pretty color. It's like, um, it's like the perfect camel color, isn't it? So nice. And I'm just gonna sweep this along the lash line. So this product does have that clay de peau rose scent. It's very, very faint, but it is there. Wow, it's showing up so much darker in the viewfinder than it is in real life. Huh, interesting. That was kind of shocking when I, when I looked up. It's usually the other way around, you know? Usually I feel like in real life, I feel like I have a ton of makeup on and then I look at the viewfinder and it doesn't look like I have anything on. So strange, okay. <laughs> And this color isn't like warming up or doing the thing that most eyeshadows do on my lids, which is kind of, I don't want to say oxidized because I don't think that's actually what's happening. I think it's, it just warms up on my eyelids. But this is staying very true to color. Okay, wow. Yeah, it looks really dark in the viewfinder. I'm gonna take the G29 Esam brush with nothing on it and just um, blend this out. I'm gonna take another S33 brush and go into this kind of pinky shade here. And this one has a bit of a satiny sheen to it. This has, actually, it's a little bit more than just a satin. It's kind of like a metallic shade. And the reflect is very similar to this shade. Very pretty. I'm gonna take this G29 brush again. I'm gonna go into this shade here. And this has a little bit of a, a satin sheen to it, but not as much as that pink that I just put on. Oh, it does have a sheen to it though. Oh, okay. Can't really see it in the pan. Okay, so I take that back. These two shades, <laughs> these two shades have a sheen. These two are like a soft matte. And now, let's see. I'm gonna use my T05 liner brush and see if this formula works as a liner. Sometimes, sometimes some eyeshadows, even though they're dark, they just don't work great as a liner, but we'll see. Hmm, I think that worked pretty well, actually. It's like inky enough and I don't see any fallout. Sometimes some shadows are just too dry and they just like kind of fall everywhere, but this one worked actually quite nicely. All right, yeah, I like this, um, I like this quad a lot. It's really pretty. I think even if I just use that kind of pink shade and that light shade, just those two shades, I think it would be really nice too. And maybe throw in the dark brown for liner. It's really pretty. Okay, I'm very, very happy with these quads. And I don't know if you guys saw my unboxing of these, but these are all refillable. So you can pop these out, the actual quad part out, and then stick it in. And it just snaps in. Very easy. Super exciting. I'm just gonna curl my lashes. I'm still working out of the makeup bag that I brought to New York. I haven't really unpacked yet. And then just trying to finish up my Lancome waterproof lashy doll. I think I think it's on its last legs. Still going strong, okay. <laughs> and then finally, oops, I wanna try some of these, not some, I wanna try one, but let's take a look at all of them. These new U Beauty Plasma Lip Compounds. Oh my God, I love this so much. So there's Lady, Flush, Bellini, and Sunset. I mean, these are just tinted, so I don't even know if swatching them is gonna help, but let me squeeze some out. Let's start there. So here is Sunset, here is Bellini, there's Flush, and here's Lady. This one reminds me of one that came out in the previous release, so I'm gonna put that away. I think I'm gonna try Bellini since I have kind of a warmish eyeshadow look going on. That was this one, by the way. Such a light tint. I mean, these are really, first and foremost, skincare. So, so good. My lips, 
I mean, they just feel completely different. I don't feel like I wake up with like that peely lip skin anymore. And I just keep these in my purse. It's not like I slather it on before I go to sleep. It's not like a lip mask or anything. It's just something I throw on like during the day if my lips feel a little dry or whatever. I'll put it on in lieu of lipstick if I want something like a lip gloss. These have been so great. I love these. All right, well, that's my trying new makeup. Everything is really lovely. I really like this foundation. This finish is incredible. Okay, I'm gonna remove this before I make a mess, which I always do. I always forget I have swatches all over me. So let me do that and then I'll take you over to the kitchen and we'll go through the PR that I received while I was away. Hi, little farty pants. Do you wanna to come to the kitchen with us? Unbox some PR? Or you wanna stay here and fart? You can stay here and fart if you want. Oh, you're coming with, okay. All right. Well, if you need to fart, go right ahead. I understand, let it out, girl. Let it out. All right. Wow, this is so strange. My makeup looks so different <laughs> in the viewfinder than it does in real life. It looks so orangey, but it really doesn't. It looks more like neutral camel-y. I wonder what's going on. Maybe it's the lighting. The lighting in my kitchen is a little bit warm. Anyway, <laughs> let's unbox some of this stuff. Okay, I got something from Say. Very exciting. Why do I always start this without taking out a knife? What's wrong with me? I just get so excited, but I've been doing this for years and I just can't get my knife together. Okay, <laughs> let's open this guy up. A box in a box. Ooh, Glossy Bounce, yes! These are their new, ooh, oh boy, they're like all stuck. Um, the new lip glosses. Glossy, juicy, bouncy, available in six nourishing, non-sticky shades for healthy, full lips. So it is exclusively at Sephora and Say Hello and Cult Beauty. $22. Ooh, how amazing. Oh my God, I love this shade already. This one is... Push, which is a soft brown. There's like so much sticky stuff on here. I don't know what happened. It probably melted. That's what happened. It's so freaking hot here. And then we have Kiss, which is clear, essentially. And then this one is Bounce, which is a mauve. And then this one is Dip, which is a dusty rose. And then we have Play, which is a bright pink. And then what do we have? Dream, which is a berry. Let's see, I did just put that plasma lip compound on, but let's just, let's just throw something on top. I wanna see, or I should say what I'm most curious about is like how glossy they are, because I like a gloss, but I don't really like like a super wet look. I just feel like it makes it look like you're drooling. But <laughs> let's try this. So this one is clear, I'm just gonna put this on. Oh, it's not super wet looking. It's just, it's like a nice gloss. Okay, awesome. Because this, I have to admit, this kind of scared me. <laughs> this like super high, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like the really wet looking glosses, I just, I don't like it. It always looks like you just ate fried chicken or and you're drooling, like all at the same time. Yeah, this has a really nice gloss to it. Really nice finish. So nice, yes. Oh, thank you so much, Say. I will definitely be using those. Mm, they feel really great. Ooh, and I got something from Persona Cosmetics. Let's see. I just used her eyebrow gel. Ah, they've come out with new dream sticks, Guava and Mojave. Oh, but they sent me three. What did they send me? Guava, Mojave, and Doom, which is a bronze. Oh, the Mojave is a bronze stick. So they sent me two bronze sticks and then the one blush stick, which is guava. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Let's take a look at this guava. This looks right up my alley. It's kind of like a nude peach. And the Persona Dream Sticks are really, really wonderful. Like the formula is so great. Wow, thank you so much, Persona. These are great. Ooh, looks like I got something from Bobby Brown. Exciting. Oh no, this is, why does it say Bobby Brown? It says Bobby Brown, I guess maybe they ship from the same warehouse. It says Bobby Brown, but it's Bumble and Bumble. So I got their hairdresser's invisible oil, which I think at this point has like a cult status. And then 
the Hairdresser's Invisible Oil Ultra Rich Hyaluronic Treatment Lotion for Scalp to Ends Nourishment. That is very promising. It's for dry to very dry hair. I don't know if my hair is dry, but it's definitely getting um, coarser the older I get. And so it, it feels like it's dry. I don't know, maybe this will help kind of soften it up a little. Thank you, Bumble and Bumble. And then, ooh, something from Shantakai. Hey. Introducing our new BioLifting eye cream. Yes, the new addition to Shantakai's award-winning BioLifting collection. <gasps> this is very exciting. BioLifting eye cream. Uh, in four weeks, visibly lifts and tightens. In eight weeks, under eye wrinkles appear less visible. Skin is more hydrated, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the little jar that it comes in. And then it does also come with a little scoopy, ooh, which is very cooling. Very nice, thank you so much, Shantakai. This is it's very exciting. I love the BioLifting line. Oh, Renee Furscherer. I really like their hair care products. So this is shampoo, it's strengthening shampoo with essential oils for thinning hair. I, I could fall into that category. Um, texturizing detangling condition for thinning hair. Amazing. This is stimulating concentrate, strength and vitality essential oils. Wow, thank you very much. I'm getting a bunch of hair stuff this time. And then this, ooh, this is from Tata Harper. Sorry, I just moved my mic up here, so if I sound different, that's why. Uh, refining cleanser, part of their super kind line. I have used up a bottle of this, so thank you very much for the re-up on that. Very exciting, I love it, because it's just so, it's gentle but effective. It's so nice. And their radiance mask, ooh. Now, I was hesitant in trying this, but I have tried this before because it has um, like natural exfoliants and I was not sure if that was gonna work for my sensitive skin. Oh, here it says, mild AHAs exfoliate and microbiome balancing prebiotics support a healthy skin barrier. It didn't, it didn't irritate my skin. Like I said, my sensitive skin has been getting less sensitive the older I get and that actually worked for me, so. Very exciting, thank you very much, Tata Harper. I love this super kind line. If you have sensitive skin, it's great. And then, ooh, a big box from Credo Beauty. Lola V, or Lola Vi, award-winning hair care by Jennifer Aniston. A lot of hair stuff this time. Oh, great. Oh, wow, it looks like they sent over a bunch of, let me get this out of the way. A bunch from the, I don't know if this is the entire line, but a lot from the line. We have shampoo, a conditioner, intensive repair treatment, a lightweight hair oil. This is a leave-in conditioner, and this is a glossing detangler. Wow. Thank you so much to Credo and Lola V. Very, very cool. Oh, I can't wait. Try all this hair stuff out. So exciting. And then, this is from a PR firm, let's see what's in here. Ah, stuff from Dr. Jart. Uh, we have a firming mask, a peeling mask, she type blah, blah, blah. Exfoliates skin with peeling essence, huh. And then there is a clearing solution, sheet type face mask that clears and soothes sensitive skin. Huh, that sounds perfect for me. And then we've got the cryo rubber with firming collagen. Now I'm gonna admit, I've seen this. I've seen this before. That, that scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Every time I see that, I'm like, oh God, <laughs> it just scares me. But it's a two-step intensive firming kit. Step one, okay, and then rubber mask. All right, maybe we'll just have to give it a shot. I have to get over that creepy, creepy face. Is it just me? That's creepy as hell, right? Um, okay, and then we have an eye cream. We have, oh, SPF 50, you can always use that. Uh, a radiance serum and, oh, cleansing foam. pH balancing cleanser, ooh, awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Jart. This is so great. You guys know how obsessed I am with their premium BB, like tinted moisturizers, so good. All right, and then, ooh, 
Another thing from Ritual Defeat. Wow, they're coming out with a lot of stuff. Before I open my big mouth, I don't know what this is, but I feel like I just tried their thorn oils and I actually brought them with me to New York. That's how much I love those. Oh, this is their new mascara. That's right, I did see this. Levitation Lash Before After. Ooh, wow. Before After. Here's some more pictures. Ooh, thank you so much, Ritual Defeat. And I think there's only one color, right? Yeah, Midnight Black. So cool, thank you so much. Ooh, and something from Orsay Cosmetics. This is a wonderful brand. I think they just started out with, was it powder or was it their foundation? Anyway, I believe the company started um, by an Asian woman. And so the, yeah, so the tones of everything are like Asian skin friendly. Yes, Taiwanese Malaysian heritage. Oh, how cool. Let's see what is in here. We are so excited to share the relaunch of our serum foundation with you, featuring brand new packaging and improved formula. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for supporting our brand through the years. We cannot wait to hear how you like our Come Closer Serum Foundation 2.0. I remember, I really liked their original serum foundation. It had like medium to full coverage. It was a little bit, it was more than what I normally wear, but it was lovely. Like if you like more coverage, it was a great, um, a great foundation. And then the shade was like a little bit off because it has like, um, it had like a yellow undertone. It just didn't quite work. But I would like to see this newly reformulated. Oh, they sent me this like discovery set. Oh, this is so great. Look at that. That's so smart, 30N20W, 10W. So they sent over 10W, 20W, and 30N. That is so perfect, I love that. Oh, they sent a big bottle in 30N, which is, I think, my shade, and then they're perfecting setting powder, which is a great setting powder. And, oh, what's this? Oh, they're Eastern Beauty Oolong Tea. Orange Blossom Muscat Grape. Rose. Wow, look at that. That's amazing. And then tasting notes. Oh, the beauty bar. Skincare chocolate. What? Tasting notes. Oolong tea infused cacao with pearl powder and Okinawan brown sugar. Sorry, my eyes are shot, but I think that says Okinawan brown sugar. <gasps> wow. This isn't exactly on my trainer's nutritional plan. Maybe I'll give it to my husband. And then their sponge. And look at this cute cosmetics bag. Oh, I love it. Wow, thank you so much, Orsay. This is wonderful. I cannot wait to try the new serum foundation. And then this is something I ordered myself and it arrived the day before I left for New York. So I just didn't get a chance to play with them, but these are the Merit Solo Shadows. I was so excited for these and now I feel like it's kind of late, but no, I uh, cannot wait to try these out. So here's a little pamphlet they gave. I ordered three shades. I got Studio, Nelson, and Mid-Century. Let's take a look at these. So this one is Mid-Century. It's a brown, it's on the warmer side, but it looks like there's a lot of white in there too. Oh, and I like this cover, it kind of clicks closed. Oh, that's really nice. And then we have Nelson, which is like a deep grayish brown. And then we have Studio. This actually looks very close to Mid-Century. One moment, please. Well. Studio is obviously lighter than mid-century. I probably would not have gotten this had I known that they're pretty close though, huh? Wouldn't you say? Yeah, they're pretty close. I wonder if these are gonna pop up at Sephora, probably. I should probably just go in store and take a look and pick them up there. But that is what I got myself at uh, Merit. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay, I'm gonna clean up this disaster now. So I'll be back when I need to get ready for the Loewe event. Uh, we'll do that together. And yeah, in the meantime, I'm just gonna like edit some videos and play with butter. Butters, are you biting yourself again, baby? Butters. She keeps biting herself. I think we have to apply some more lotion on her. We have this like dog friendly lotion that I think helps her itchy skin. Poor baby. Hello, I am gonna get ready for this Lueve event. 
uh, I don't know what to wear. I think, I think we're just gonna wear something casual and it's, it's like not a big deal. I definitely wanna wear something kind of plain. So when I try on bags and possibly shoes, like my outfit doesn't interfere with it. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes I feel like if I wear something specific or like a specific color and if it doesn't go with what I'm trying on, then it completely like, I don't know, I become very biased. Anyway, so I'll probably just put on like a white blouse, some jeans or something. And you know what's funny? I was just thinking, I was like, oh, I'll wear like a Loewe bag and Loewe shoes, but I only have Loewe sneakers and then I have heels. I don't have flats. So maybe that's something I should look for this evening. I am gonna wear my black puzzle bag though. I think that's the bag I'm gonna bring. It's just easy, it's crossbody. So maybe I'll just wear my Birkenstocks. All right, let me figure out my outfit. Let me try a couple things. I'll be right back. All right, I just have a white blouse on. My Kate Ian jeans, which are freshly washed. And I was afraid maybe they were gonna be too snug. You know, I have to kind of like break your jeans back in, but they're actually kind of loose. So I guess the uh, nutrition plan my trainer has me on <laughs> is working, at least in the weight loss department. So I really kind of want to just wear my Burks, but is that too, is that too pedestrian? No, is that too like sloppy? I guess I could put on a pair of maybe these. I haven't worn my Dior leopard like dad sandals in a while. I think this will go fine with the black puzzle bag, right? Yeah, I think so. And just a quick makeup check. This makeup is looking really good. The foundation looks great. I love it. If you guys have been debating about the Suku, the foundation, I would give it a shot. The eyeshadow is still there and it's been about I don't know, it's been about five, six hours, and I did run around, I had to go out and do some more errands outside. It is very warm here in Vegas today. Um, so I did do that. It has withstood some heat. Yeah, yeah, very pleased. Okay, let me get these shoes on. Oh no, it's been more like, yeah, it's been more like six hours actually. Okay, dad sandals are on. Makeup I think looks fine. Yeah, and like no running or smudging or anything. Hair is as good as it's gonna get. Um, oh, perfume. I'm gonna put on my new Louis Vuitton. I still don't know how to pronounce <laughs> this fragrance, but anyway, I love it. This is the one that I just hauled. It smells like Coca-Cola. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. This is such a great substitute for that Killian Boys. Oh my God, it's so good. I may even like it better. It's a little bit more complex than Boys. Mm, so good. So I'm gonna have my puzzle bag. I've got my jewelry on. I've got earrings on. Yeah, I'm pretty much set to go. I'm gonna bring this camera, see if they'll let me vlog a little bit. Loewe is pretty good. They're pretty good. There's some stores where it's like, absolutely not. Like Celine is absolutely not. Hermes, absolutely not. Um, and Prada generally, but since they know me, they let me, they let me vlog in there. Louis Vuitton, absolutely not. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna bring my camera. Let me take, take off the, the microphone. I'm gonna take this off because I'm not gonna bring this. I don't like to go out and vlog with the external mic. It's just too fussy. All right, let's head on out to Loewe.
Adam. Up in Adam, I have to make some breakfast before I see my trainer this morning. So I thought I would chat and cook at the same time. Now that I'm saying that, it's probably a bad idea. I'm probably gonna screw something up. <laughs> but I'm just making some eggs. And um, I don't think I talked to you after the Loewe event. And I say event in quotes because they were just launching a new bag and it was very small. And I, in fact, I got there a little bit early and I was the only person in the store. <laughs> So I did take some shots of, you know, the store and obviously me trying on bags and stuff. And I did end up getting a bag. Can you guys guess which one it is? I think in this video, I'm gonna show you what I got at Woodbury Commons when I was in New York. And then I may save the two things that I got yesterday for another video because I did also stop into Celine and pick up something as well. Not that it matters, but I thought maybe I would spread out the content a little bit. So I think I may have mentioned this before when I started talking about, you know, working out and the eating and all that stuff, but the um, breakfast is my largest meal, which I'm just not used to doing. You know, it's usually dinner, which I think goes for most people. Dinner has always been my um, largest meal. And when I was younger, I used to wake up and eat breakfast, you know, and I would be hungry and I would look forward to it. But as I got older, I just don't, I just kind of stopped or yeah, I would kind of wait a while. I'd have my coffee. When I got hungry, I would eat. So I really got out of the habit of eating first thing in the morning. But, um, you know, my trainer wants me to eat before we work out. He's like very, very important to have something for your muscles. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So anyway, just making this big ass breakfast, which again, I'm not really used to. Okay, I'm gonna let these eggs kind of cook a little bit. I have to heat up some sweet potato. I picked up these um, purple, I think they're called purple Stokes sweet potatoes. Aren't they pretty? So anyway, I like, uh, bake a whole bunch of them, I slice them up and I bake a whole bunch. But now when I have to reheat them, I just nuke them. It loses a little bit of its charm when you nuke them because they do get a little bit rubbery, but I just don't have time to like throw them in the toaster or whatever. So I'm just gonna nuke this. So I don't know what my trainer has planned for me today. I'm thinking maybe we'll do legs, which makes doing cardio afterwards very challenging <laughs> because my legs usually feel like rubber. And then when I get on the treadmill, I'm like, I don't even know if I can like stand. So instead of jogging, I'll like walk on an incline or something on leg day, just so I don't hurt myself. You know, my husband mentioned this when he picked me up from the airport when I, you know, just got back from New York. And I just was like, hey, okay, yeah, whatever. But I got a jury summons. <laughs> a jury summons, oh my God. Reporting date, October 4th. I feel like I did this. I guess this must be for a different courthouse. So what else do I have to catch you guys up on? Oh, my friend Jen. Okay, actually, let me back up. I have two, maybe three friends coming to visit me in a couple of weeks for my birthday. Oops, for my birthday. I am turning 50 this year, so it's, I mean, whatever. <laughs> so it's just another year, but it's a milestone year. And because I've just been so busy and traveling and, you know, work is always busy, um, I just, you know, I just didn't plan anything. I just haven't even thought about it. So I've got two, maybe three of my girlfriends uh, flying in to hang out which will be so great. And then my good friend, Jen, my bestie, she is coming beginning of October for like a week to hang out, which I'm very excited about. We were thinking about going away together. And, do, and I was like, again, I was, I'm like, I have done so much traveling. I'm so tired of traveling. That I really wanted to stay put and she loves to travel. She's one of those weird people. And this is Jen. This is the uh, friend that I went to Morocco with. This is the friend that I vlogged with earlier this year. She's the one that made me do yoga. <laughs> this is that friend. Um, she loves to travel. I mean, down to, she loves packing, unpacking. She loves like going to the airport, the whole thing from the very beginning to the very end. She just loves traveling. I'm like, you are a psychopath. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but she loves it. So anyway, when I was like, oh, I don't know, I've been traveling so much. She's like, I'll come to you. I'm like, okay. So she's coming. 
beginning of October, of October. And then around Thanksgiving, beginning of December, my friends Matthew and Mark, the ones that I stay with at the lake house, I was just with them. They're gonna be here in Vegas. Oh, and some other of my friends, oh my goodness. So even before that, towards the end of October, more of my lake friends are gonna be here. There's a couple coming to see Adele. And so, yeah, they're gonna be here with I think like more of their family, their mom and their sister. So they're coming towards the end of October. So exciting. And then I've got Matthew and Mark coming end of November, beginning of December. I think that's it. I mean, it's kind of a lot of visitors, but I love it. I love having people stay. I think I mentioned once like Jen will stay anywhere between like five and eight days. I mean, Jen could move in with me. I it's she's I've known her forever. She's like family. And I mentioned that in one of my vlogs. I was like, oh, yeah, she's here for about a week or whatever. And someone was like, whoa, like that is a long time to like stay with someone like I cap out at like three or four days. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess I would if it's someone that I just I didn't know very well or if it's, you know, some family members like, yeah, sure. But my friends. Oh my, they could move in. Like Matthew and Mark, they could stay here for years. Like I, I wouldn't forever, you know, to infinity. So, so yeah, that does not bother me. I love having people over because then I don't have to travel. Then I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> they can just come to me. That's the update in terms of visitors for the rest of the year. I will of course vlog when Jen was here cause she does not mind. I don't know if I'll vlog when my girlfriends come for my birthday. They're a little bit more camera shy, but we'll see. Oh, and my car. Okay, let's see the update on my on my new car. Thank goodness I extended my lease. Okay, it is expected to come at the end of this month. So it probably won't be here for my birthday. I'm supposed to be here at the end of August of last month. Obviously it didn't make it. <laughs> I guess it missed its boat or something because it's being boated here from Germany. Through the Panama Canal, which makes me very nervous because I think there's always backups in the canal because of like the drought. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I just saw a news article about that and I was like, great. <laughs> I can imagine my car getting stuck in there. Um, anyway, so that's coming at the end of this month. Very excited. So that's the update on that. I'm just still drinking my coffee black and I have got to put ice in here. All right, I better stop yapping, finish this breakfast and head on out to the gym. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So I wanted to show you what I purchased at Woodbury Commons. I've been talking about this this whole vlog. I'm finally sitting in my bedroom, unpacking my bags. You guys, I am terrible at this. I am not that person that like comes home and unpacks immediately. It literally stays in here for like weeks. And the way my last year has gone, it literally stays in here until like my next trip. So anyway, I'm trying to be a little bit better. Let me see, let me see, how should I show you this? Okay, so this is not really gonna be an unboxing because I had to basically toss out like the packaging so that I could pack the stuff in my luggage and get it home. But I did get a pair of shoes at Loewe and these were really marked down. Aren't they cool? These are all crystal and then they're a mule. So they're closed toe. They've got this leather strap and the heel is probably a little bit higher than what I would say is like super comfortable. These are uh, definitely taller than like the padded green ones that I have from Loewe. Like they're more than just a kitten heel, but still very like comfortable. Still, I can walk in them. I walked around the store in them. Um, so I'm try I don't think I have like all my receipts and stuff. I think I may have thrown them all out, but yeah, these were 200 something dollars. So I thought that was quite the steal. Even if these are shoes I can't wear all the time, um, I thought they would be nice to have on those certain occasions. So that's what I got at Loewe. I was really hoping to get a bag. The last time I was there, they had a really good selection of hammock bags, of their flamenco clutch, um, and some other like limited edition ones. But they had um, a pretty small selection this time. And then they just weren't my thing. They had the flamenco clutch that had almost looked like it was like a tiered dress. And I was like, that's a little too frilly for me. So they had a bunch of those and then they had some fluorescent colored ones, which I didn't think I would use. So anyway, I uh, am happy that I got these shoes though. I think they're, I think they're pretty cool. And in their current collection, they have some slides. I think they may be open to, I'm not sure, but they are still doing this whole like crystal thing. So even though these are from an older season, I don't feel like they're totally out of date. And I do have size 39, which is pretty true to my size. And so. then I got a 
bunch of stuff at Prada. I was actually kind of surprised, but the Prada outlets, the one that I went to by Palm Springs, I can't remember the name of it, but the one that's by Palm Springs, um, they have a Prada outlet. That was really good. That's where I got my gray hoodie. I wear that incessantly. I brought it with me on this trip. Um, so that I thought that was a really good find. And then this one at Woodbury, I just was like, let me just stop in and peek in and see what they have. They had such good stuff. So they had, oh, like in my last vlog, uh, do you guys remember that Zara skirt that I got? It was basically inspired by Prada. It has those like sequins or whatever. Well, they had the sequin cardigan at Prada. And I remember eyeing this, like I almost got this when it first came out full price. And I just love it. I actually wore this out to dinner when I was um, at the lake, but it has very subtle triangle here. This is uh, like a piece of tool that's creating this uh, triangle. And so it looks very, almost like charcoal. And it has this black ribbing and it is sheer, it is see-through. And it is actually quite warm. It's not very breathable because I did wear it um, like I said, when I was there at the lake and, and it was pretty warm. I mean, it wasn't super hot. It wasn't like Vegas hot, but it was pretty warm. And I was pretty warm in this. And I remember thinking to myself like, okay, this is not a very breathable situation despite it being um, sheer because I think it is like covered with these paillettes. So anyway, everything at Prada, I felt like ran a little bit big. This I think is a size 38. Yeah, it's a size 38 and I am not a 38 in like anything. So I was kind of surprised. They had a couple sizes and I just kept going down and down and down. And this is still very baggy, not, not baggy, but like, you know, like it's supposed to blouse out a little bit. So anyway, I picked this up and this was marked down 50% from like its original price. Again, I wish I had the paperwork, but I think I threw everything out when I was packing. Um, and then because, <laughs> because I purchased over a certain amount at Prada, they gave me an additional, I think 15% off my entire order. So that was amazing. So I got that and then I got this coat and I'll link to whatever I can find online down below just cause I'm sitting here and I don't know if you will get a good idea of all this stuff. Yeah, you'll be able to see it online, but they gave me this nice garment bag, which is really nice. You know, at the outlets, they usually don't, you know, throw and stuff like that, but they did at this one. So this, I was just, just like so shocked at <laughs> that they had this, but this is a re nylon three quarter sleeve coat and it's a dolman. See, there's no sleeve sleeve. So the front and the sleeve is like all one piece. And let me stand up. You'll probably get a better idea. Here's the top. So it has a really high neck. It has these three snap buttons. They're really big. These big buttons here. This is just such a quintessential, like Mrs. Prada coat. I really couldn't believe that they had this here um, at the outlet. So um, yeah, I just grabbed the opportunity to, uh, to get this. It is quite heavy. This is definitely, at least for Vegas, like a winter coat. It's lined, it's very, very thick. Um, and this, I think I got size 42, which is definitely um, more in line with my regular sizing. Let me just make sure. Yeah, I got size 42. And sorry, I'm looking at all the tags to see if I can find a price, but no. All these things were at least 50% off from retail. I think this, yeah, at least 50% off from retail. And, you know, again, I got that additional 15% off, which was amazing. And then finally from Prada, so funny, I didn't really like any of the handbags or accessories or shoes or anything, but the clothing was so good. Now you guys, this is so not me, but when I fell in love with Prada, in like fall of 95. This was a print that came out in their spring, I believe their spring 96 collection. 
And I fell in love with it. And I, I think I can attribute my love of like really acidy kind of greens to this collection. I don't know if you guys remember this. And if, and if I can find a picture, I'm gonna flash it up here. But Carolyn Murphy, who's a supermodel, she wore this outfit where this pattern that I'm gonna show you was like an overcoat. And then with the same color, she wore this like gauzy floral print dress underneath. So the patterns were like in opposition of one another, but the color scheme was the same. And this is such a typical, now looking back and looking through all their collections, this is such a typical kind of like Prada color scheme. Um, but I had to get this hoodie because oh, I'm so nostalgic over this print and these colors, this acid green, the brown, and in that collection they had like a purple. And a lot of it was on this like off-white base. So they brought the print back, they came out with these hoodies. And I remember when they came out with these hoodies, I really wanted them, but again, I didn't really want to pay retail. They were very, very expensive. <laughs> um, but this was, I think even more than 50% off and then I got that additional discount. But it's, it's just cool. It's, you know, a typical hoodie. And then on the back, they have this <laughs> black triangle with the Prada on there. Isn't that just cool? I mean, to me, this is just, oh, this is like such a great collector's item. It's a collector's item from like a collector's collection. Does that, am I making sense? You know what I'm saying. Anyway, this I got size... I get size extra small. I mean, and this is women's. I was like, is this men's? They were like, no, this is part of the women's collection. I was like, this is huge on me. And when it gets cooler, I will definitely be wearing this and you'll see. But yeah, I was just surprised that this was an extra small. So like I said, I think everything at Prada kind of runs large, except for their more tailored things like this re-nylon coat. So that is what I got at Prada. And then I did get something at Celine, which I love. I was really on the fence about it. I hemmed and hawed. I like put it aside. The salesperson there was incredible. His name is Phil. <laughs> if you guys go to Woodbury Commons, definitely check out Phil at Celine. He was very nice, very helpful. He set it aside for me. It was the only one in the store. He set it aside. I was like, I'm just gonna keep looking around, looking around. And then I just finally decided to get it. Cause I'm like, you know what? This is perfect for Vegas. I got this. <laughs> leopard print nylon anorak from Celine. It's just perfect for Vegas because it's lightweight, but it's actually lined. So it's got full lining. So it's great for like windy days, which it gets very, very windy here in Vegas. And I just, I love it. You guys know I love animal print and it had some very subtle details. Like there's Celine here on the, uh, the right breast. And then I think this is, I think this is a men's style. I'm not sure. I think this is a men's style. I think I asked and he was like, you know, most of Celine's stuff is kind of unisex. He was like, it doesn't really matter, but the placket is going, yeah, is going towards the men's side. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it has like a little Celine, the little like Triumph logo there on the zipper. Um, it has, on the buttons, some Celine there. And then it does have pockets too. So it has a kangaroo pocket with a zip and then it has um, pockets on the side that also zip up. And it's great, it has a hood. And I wore this like the entire time I was on the lake because this was perfect, perfect, perfect for like the whole lake situation, like in the evenings. I just threw this on, it was perfect. So I'm really, really glad I got this. I was like, why did I even hesitate? I love this. Let me share with you the size if I can find it. So this is a size 40. Yeah, that's, that's like women's sizing, right? Yeah, this is a size 40. And again, I tried on the 42 and I was swimming in it. So I don't know. I mean, the sizing is so inconsistent, but I would say generally I'm like a rock solid 42. I guess it depends. I know like an Italian 42 is very different from a French 42. But anyway, it just felt like everything was kind of like running on the big side. So that's what I got at Celine. And then one last thing I got is downstairs. Let me 
Yeah, it's downstairs. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, last but not least, God, I'm realizing my bed is made so poorly. <laughs> Sorry about that. Butters, you're sniffing the Prada. I know you're a Prada girl. I can tell. They have all these doggy accessories and every time I go to Prada, I'm like, should I get Butters like a little Prada bag? <laughs> That would be ridiculous, right, baby? Um, okay, so <laughs> this is the last thing I picked up. And this bag is a bag that I uh, was actually eyeing maybe this past fall, winter. So I was interested in getting the Celine Romy bag. And um, I don't know if you know what that looks like, but I'll flash a picture of it up here because it's a current style. Hi, baby. It's a current style, but it's basically like a flat bottomed hobo kind of bag. So it's kind of like a, like it has like a trapezoid shape. So it's usually wider at the bottom and it kind of angles in and then it's slouchy on the top and it's like a shoulder bag. So it's kind of like a, it's like a hobo, but it doesn't have like the rounded bottom. Anyway, I was eyeing that bag, eyeing that bag. And I, you know, I have this like whole bag thing that I've talked about on the channel before, but how I've, oh, personally, I just gravitate towards larger bags, but having moved to Vegas, I just really don't have much of a need for them because of the car culture here versus um, the, the walking culture in New York City. So anyway, I was kind of like looking into the, the Romy bag and did I really think I was gonna use it? And in looking at that bag and kind of looking into that bag, I came across, I have no idea what the style of this bag is. And again, I'll leave it down below if I can find it, but I think it's like been discontinued but it's a bag from Bottega Veneta, which is very, very similar. So anyway, this bag was at the outlet and not only was it marked down 50%, that was the price at the outlet, but on top of that, they marked it down like 60% on top of that. So I got this bag, which I think was somewhere between three and $4,000. I got it for just over $1,000. And it's not, it's probably not the color I would have opted for. However, this is like a very popular color. I don't know if you guys have seen the articles or whatever, but this like butter yellow color is very in right now. So it is this bag. Well, I packed it not so great, but this leather is so soft. It just has a flap top. So um, in relation to the Celine Romy, that one has like a zip top. Um, but it has like a very similar kind of like edging on the sides with like the straps there. Um, the only way you can tell that it's Bottega is that it has this triangle buckle and it's got the strap going all the way around. And I just really love this bag. This is on its longest setting, but I can punch holes to make it a little bit longer if I want, because right now it like sits right up in my shoulder, which is not always my favorite. It's very secure but I don't think it's the most comfortable. And if I'm wearing a coat, it may actually be a little snug. Um, and it's a really simple bag. It just has, like I said, this flap, and then you open it and it's literally just a cavern. There's no inside pocket or anything. So anyway, that is what I picked up at Bottega. And this and the shoes, I think were like the best deals that I got. So again, if you're in the New York City area, if you're by Woodbury Commons, if you're visiting and you can get up to Woodbury Commons, I know there's tons of buses that go up there. It's like such a destination. Definitely check it out. They always have good, like really, really good stuff. And I know when I went the year before, that's when I got the Dior camouflage anorak. Um, actually, that's not an anorak. It's like a zip up like rain jacket. I got that then. Yeah, they just always have good stuff. There's nothing good at Dior this time. Um, they actually had a couple of handbags or whatever, but you know how I feel about doer handbags. I'm always like, I'm not sure, but I do want to get that tote actually. Do you guys remember me talking about that tote? I really, really want it. <laughs> I think I'll have to wait a couple of months because I've been doing a lot of shopping. Anyway, um, that's what I got at Woodbury Commons. And I think I'm going to end this vlog here because I'm going to go downstairs and actually film. So anyway, I'm going to do that. So I'll leave you guys here and <laughs> hi butters. And I'll see you guys in my next vlog. Bye.